Myths, reptilians in underground bases, UFOs, extraterrestrials, and even the Dolce base. Let's remember even Greek antiquity talked about reptilians. This here is an image of the first king of Athens, Greece, Eric Theus, and he's got, a, he's got a building right next to the Parthenon on the Acropolis. His top half was man, the bottom half was coils of snakes. And then we have another one. It's not just a man snake, it's also a woman snake, the viper. She was a very zoftic, enticing female figure that uh, would bring the demise to men that uh, fell in love with her. She was half woman and half snake. So we even have this from antiquity. Now, Dr. Rita Lewis, guest Walking Times, writes, Deep in north-central New Mexico is the sleepy little town of Dolce. Dolce is located on the Archuleta Mesa in the Colorado-New Mexico border. It's home to about 3,000 residents, and it's the capital of the Jicarilla Apache Nation. For as small and as insignificant as this remote location may sound, it became the center of controversy in the early 1980s. Physicist and inventor Paul Benowitz claimed he had discovered an underground base occupied by reptilian extraterrestrials near Dolce. His story quickly spread through UFO community. Allegations that surround the base include human abductions, that is, alien abductions, by these extraterrestrial beings. He also asserted that the lizard people, the reptilians, were engaged in the development of advanced technology, including genetic manipulation. Their plan, according to conspiracy theorists, is to control the government and gain uh, ultimate control of the earth by means of a new world order. Stories have emerged regarding an untoward alliance between humans and the inhabitants of the Dolce base, which includes ties to shadow governments via secret societies, such as the Illuminati, Masons, Bilderberg, and the Skull and Bones. Dolce is not the only place on Earth where it's believed underground bases exist, but it is the one which has received the greatest notoriety in recent times. Subterranean bases, according to conspiracy theorists, can be found around the world, with major active outposts all across the United States, Australia, Antarctica, and South America. These underground bases are connected to each other via a series of channels which connect one base to the other. There are even assertions that one of these tunnels leads to an active base beneath the Vatican, which has been exerting control over Western civilizations for centuries. But what does mythology say about reptilians in underground bases? Well, I've already updated, dated, uh, uploaded uh, videos concerning reptilians and uh, legends and myths from ancient Greece having to do with underground dwellings of reptilians. So what about this? The wealth of information regarding this subject has recently surfaced that seemingly reaches across vast extremes, and as strange as all of this may sound, could any of what they say be true? We turn to mythology in the search for answers. It must be stated before we move on that mythology, like many of the claims that come from the UFO community, is treated more like science fiction rather than fact. Traditional mythologists contains Mythologists con content that the, uh, uh, contend that the gods we find in myth represent the forces of nature or the creation of someone's vivid imagination. And with that said, does mythology support these seemingly outlandish claims? Stories of underground realms occupied by the gods, quote-unquote, pervade mythology. Depending on the culture, it's been called Hades, Tartarus, Xibalba, Duat, Patala, and Hell. And these homes of the gods, quote-unquote, are not always found deep within the earth, but are sometimes described as being within a mountain or deep beneath the waters of the earth. Access to their domain, regardless of locality, is often described as located through the, mountain, the mouth of a cave. The entrance may appear open at one time and then disappear from you completely and instantaneously. The inhabitants of these underground realms did not desire to be visited by unwanted or unexpected company, yet access was granted to select individuals. According to ancient texts, 
entrance into the underworld was anything but easy. The Mayan Popul Vuh, for example, describes the route taken by the hero brothers Hun Hun Ahpu and Vukub Hunapu. It tells of a steep descent into the home of the lords of Xibalba and the many challenges they had to face. Similar texts, each from, such as uh, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, describe the path by which the descent, deceased king god must travel to enter Duat. And like the Popul Vu, the path is fraught with challenges. The individual must pass in order to enter the realm of the dead, the underworld. The Vishnu Puranastasites, uh, that the uh, deepest level of the underworld, Patala, can be found 70,000 Yojanas beneath the surface of the earth, Gilgamesh, in the epic bearing his name, is described as traveling 12 leagues in the dense darkness until he arrives in the light-filled chamber of the underworld. Mythological descriptions of underground bases. The underground domains of the gods are described as filled with houses or vast halls where thousands of individuals could assemble. Fountains, plants, tall grasses, trees, and animals of all kinds filled this land. The divine ascetic Narada, who is featured in the Vishnu Purana, claims to have visited Patala. Patala was much more charming than heaven, he exclaims. What can be compared with Patala where Naga's serpents are adorned with beautiful and brilliant and pleasing diffusing gems? This region is embellished with the daughters of Daitas and Danavas. Now, similar descriptions of the underground underwater homes of the gods are scattered through mythology. The home of the Sumerian fertility god Enki, which is located in the watery deep, is described as having a house built of gold, silver, and lapis lazuli. Even writers such as the Greek philosopher Plato echoes this notion. He believes that the earth was littered with a number of hollows that were full of water, air, trees, fruits, and flowers. Stories of underground bases in history. Surprisingly, Plato confirms yet another claim made by modern ufology. Plato goes on to state that these hollows were connected to one another by subterranean channels. But Plato is not the only one who refers to tunnels that lie beneath the surface of the earth. Inca legends tell of vast networks of tunnels that crisscross the length and breadth of planets, the planet complete with underground cities, when Pizarro and the Spanish conquistadors entered Peru, they kidnapped the Inca emperor Atahualpa and held him for ransom. They demanded enough gold to fill, the room, fill a room in return for Atahualpa's release. Pizarro's men heard rumors that the Inca gold was being held in a vast network of subterranean tunnels. The tunnels were thousands of years old and ran for miles beneath the Inca capital. In more recent years, adventurers who have hazarded into the caverns beneath Cusco entered but were never seen again. One man actually did make it out of the tunnels alive and he brought with him two bars of gold. According to officials, he had gone mad. The entrances to the tunnels were then walled up for safety's sake. At least that is the official story. The Apache Indians report that their ancestors took refuge in ancient tunnels during a cataclysmic disaster on the earth. They wandered these immense passageways for years, carrying the seeds of life in the new world. Underground bases and genetic engineering. But what about the other claim made by ufologists regarding these bases being used for genetic engineering? According to their assertions, it is in the lowest level, the seventh level of the Dolce base, that the extraterrestrial reptilians are engaged in this kind of experimentation. Again, mythology supports this premise. Native American tribes across the country are the most vocal when it comes to this topic. The Jicalira, Jicarilla Apache, whose headquarters is in Dolce, the Navajo and Hopi Indians have long-standing traditions of man's creation and emergence from beneath the surface of the earth. The Algonquin, the Algonquins recount, thus did the lowest, lowermost world cave become overfilled with living things, full of unfinished creatures, crawling like reptiles over one another in dark blackness. 
So in this matter, they do not stand alone. Berosus, a Babylonian priest, tells of the hideous creatures that inhabited this underground realm. He described men who had one body but two heads. Some had the legs and horns of a goat, and even some with the hindquarters of a horse and the body of a man. We're talking about centaurs, okay? The body of a man, the uh, body, body of a half of a horse. Uh, coat, the uh, uh, half man, half goat, meaning pan. The satyrs of ancient Greece. So in short, there were creatures in which they were combined the limbs of every species of animal. Let's remember that Alexander the Great also found Nephilim abominable races when uh, he went to conquer the East. And those he didn't, uh, could not do away with, he threw in the uh, open pits and covered the pit openings with uh, various metals and built pyramids on top of them. So uh, these types of... Uh, Creatures, according to Berosus, the Babylonian priests, were found in uh, the area of Mesopotamia. These genetic experiments are, according to the reports from UFO advocates, being conducted by a group of reptilian beings in the lowest levels of the base. Thomas Castello, a former senior security officer at the base, testified that the base at Dolce is a seven-level underground facility with the lower levels described as a series of natural caverns. It was believed that by, uh, by Castello that these caverns were used by different extraterrestrial races in our remote past. In Hindu cosmology, the Naga, the serpents, once lived on earth, but the great god Brahma sent them to live under the sea and in the seventh level of their underground realm called Patala. In the Sumerian Inanna's descent into the netherworld, Inanna is required to pass through seven gates to finally reach the bowels of the underworld. Aztec legend says that Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent, went to Mictal, the Aztec underworld, and created mankind using his own blood and the bones of the previous race. Throughout mythology, the act of creating humanity is always associated with a specific group of gods, the fertility gods, and these fertility gods around the world are traditionally depicted as reptilian or amphibious in nature. The reptilian agenda. A number of individual, individuals also argue that reptilians' true agenda is to control us with the objective to dominate the planet. They cite the development of the New World Order. Proponents of this theory believe that the reptilians or the byproduct of their genetic manipulation experiments intend to take control of the Earth's surface, and this takeover is being orchestrated by an extremely powerful and influential group, which includes many of the world's wealthiest people. Some claim members of this elite group are actually genetically related to each other. Their goal is to have every man, woman, child on Earth obedient to their co covert agenda, and the reptilians are also accused of wanting to reduce the population on Earth. And... Uh, down to 500 million. Now, a look into mythology relative to this claim does have a few pillars of support. The idea of culling the human population on Earth is not a modern concept. In the Sumerian epic of Atrahasis, we find a story where the gods do just that. 1,200 years after the creation of mankind, the number of people who inhabited the Earth grew. Their noise, quote-unquote, disturbed the sky god Enlil's sleep and Lil decided to send a plague in order to reduce the population. This worked for a while, but when another 1,200 years passed, the population had grown again, and Enlil was once more bothered by the noise. This time, in order to decrease their numbers, he gets the thunder rain god, Adad, to hold back the rains, and the world suffered from a great drought, where vast numbers uh, found their demise. The population continues to grow. By that time, another 1,200 years passed. The noise became too much for Enlil to bear, and wanting to alleviate his problem, he tells the gods to hold back all of nature's gifts. This went on for six years, and as the text describes, the people of the earth were reduced to cannibalism in order to survive. The fertility god Enki tried to save the people from starvation. This angered Enlil even more. And finally, Enlil, in an act of vengeance, decided to destroy mankind once and for all. He planned to do this by flooding the earth. Enki once again stepped in and saved humanity from total annihilation. 
He warned Atrahasis of the impending flood and told him to build a boat to save himself and his family. This is reminiscent of the similarities of Noah's Ark. Now, myth, reptilian and underground bases, the torrents of theories have come forward as we seek the truth regarding our place in the universe. Mythology does lend itself to support a number of these claims. It's difficult to, under, to, to determine the creators of these theories base their conjecture using myth as their foundation, first as hand experiences or something else. What does seem evident is that much of the information UFO researchers are bringing to light does parallel the myths and legends that have passed to, to us from antiquity. So bringing this idea full circle, if the stories behind uh, being uh, unearthed in the UFO community were not based on mythological sources, yet mythology supports these claims, then the stories of our distant past may have a basis in fact. It implies that the gods were living, breathing beings who walked the earth in our remote past, created man and played an essential role in the development of life and culture on our planet. And this is by Dr. Rita Louise, Guest Walking Times on Bended Reality. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.